Empiric cryoprecipitate from massive transfusion protocol. Background. Hypofibrinogenemia is known to predict massive transfusion needs and is associated with increased mortality in patients with severe trauma. The use of empiric fibrinogen replacement, particularly with cryoprecipitate, remains a contentious topic in the management of bleeding trauma patients. This study aimed to evaluate the impact of empiric cryoprecipitate transfusion as part of a balanced transfusion strategy consisting of one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one in severely injured patients experiencing active hemorrhage. Study Design and Methods this research was a sub-analysis from a multi-center randomized controlled trial conducted at a single trauma center in the United States. The study included trauma patients aged over 15 years who exhibited active hemorrhage necessitating immediate surgical or interventional radiological intervention, had activation of the massive transfusion protocol, and received at least one unit of blood. Exclusions were made for patients transferred from other facilities. Those with non-survivable injuries or injuries sustained more than three hours prior to treatment. Participants were randomized into two groups, the standard massive transfusion protocol or the massive transfusion protocol with the addition of three pools of cryoprecipitate. The primary outcome measured was all-cause mortality at 28 days, while secondary outcomes included transfusion requirements, coagulation laboratory values during and after surgery, and quality of life metrics assessed via the Glasgow Outcome Score Extended. Results A total of 49 patients were enrolled between May 2021 and October 2021, with 23 in the cryoprecipitate group and 26 in the standard group. The time to randomization was comparable between the two groups with 14 minutes versus 24 minutes. The median time to administration of cryoprecipitate was 41 minutes, with an interquartile range of 37 to 48 minutes. Demographics, initial physiology, laboratory results, and injury severity were similar across both groups. Thrombolastography assessments, including functional fibrinogen levels, also showed no significant differences. Importantly, there was no observed benefit of cryoprecipitate in terms of post-emergency department transfusion needs, complications, Glasgow outcome scores, or mortality rates. Conclusion The findings from this study indicate that the use of empiric cryoprecipitate in severely injured trauma patients does not enhance survival rates or decrease transfusion requirements. These results suggest that cryoprecipitate should be reserved for on-demand use, guided by specific laboratory values rather than administered empirically. Bottom line, empiric cryoprecipitate transfusion does not improve outcomes in patients with severe hemorrhage and should not be used as a routine intervention. Instead, its application should be based on laboratory findings to ensure optimal patient management in trauma settings.